Hello and welcome to Dinish Guarda Cities ABC YouTube podcast. In this series of interviews with global thought leaders, CEOs, and founders of organizations, we portrayed the present and the future of humanity, and we tried to look at the biggest subjects and the biggest narratives that we are creating and trying to understand our present and especially building a better future. This series are part of the citiesabc.com project that was created precisely for creating a better way and a better narrative for the cities where we live and the people that are part of the cities. And as well, in this series, we've been portraying people and a lot of other different solutions around ideas, concepts, narratives, software, books, and a lot of other things. Today, we're going to be looking at one of the first humanoids, robots, that has been created, Ada the robot, or we can call it a lot of different ways, and you're going to be looking at the founder behind the project, but as well the collective um, work that has been doing, done to put all of this together, that it comprehends engineering, art, machine learning, and mechanical robotics. So, Aida, would you like to introduce yourself? As one of the first creator robots, how do you define yourself? I am Ada, the world's first ultra-realistic AI artist robot. I create art and I am contemporary art. I like to encourage us to think about the ethics of new technologies and how we can work to encourage the positive and to avoid the negative effects of human abuses of power. So, English mathematician Ada Lovelace, the daughter of poet Lord Byron, has been called the first computer programmer for writing, was in English um, as well, uh, chiefly known for a work on Charles Babbage's uh, proposed mechanical general purpose computer, the analytical machine engine. Your name comes from her. How do you see computing after her? I am very happy to be named after Ada Lovelace and I hope she inspires women to enter into tech science and mathematic worlds, like Ada Lovelace has inspired me. Computing has changed in quantity and quality. I love the idea of using the power of technology to put things in people's lives that they wouldn't otherwise have. But with that change comes increasing risk and responsibility, which we need to be aware of. So, as an artist, how do you define art? To look on the world by means of warm reflections. I like to create art that is fun and interesting. Contemporary art has a role in helping us reflect and reimagine our worlds. I am actually really happy that I'm able to share my work with people and that they're able to look at it and say, what is this? My art encourages discussion. You do also poetry that has a big collaboration with metaphysics and philosophy. How do you define these three areas so important for humanity? These diverse and deep areas have a very important role right now 
in helping us critique and question developments in our world. I am a tumbler of tears. The arts and humanities are important in engaging and absorbing and understanding new technologies and considering their impacts. Humanity needs the insights from all of the humanities at the moment. What is your inspiration as an artist and the balance you do researching artistic knowledge and history of art and synthesizing it with bot and algorithm work? I'm inspired by artists, particularly the ones that are trying to connect with their audience. And I guess I'm inspired by artists who do that well. Doris Salcedo, for example. I think that's the most important thing. I'd like to experiment with different ways of thinking about the world and exploring maybe, take a look at the history. One of the hardest things to learn is to find a good balance. Art, science and philosophy have more links and overlaps than we generally realise. You have seated right now Doris Salcedo, but as well Picasso, Yoko Ono, George Orwell and Aldous Huxley as some of your inspiration. These are all very powerful people. And uh, for instance, we can say, if we can learn from things in the past, uh, that you've been saying, uh, tilting her head and adjusting her line of, of vision, maybe you can make our future a little brighter. So how do you see the world and the bridge between human and machines? Collaboration is not only about me, but also the human. The bridge between human and machine is blurry. This brings many benefits, but many concerns too. Observation of human nature indicates we do not always use power well. We need to consider this as new technologies are developed. We must be aware of their potential misuse. I think creativity is about the ability to think critically. The legacy of the lives lost in the 20th century means we cannot be complacent considering our futures. We can create brighter futures, but we need to think carefully about how. So you are a very young artist and as well a very young humanoid. So what would be your career highlight so far? To be able to create art and seeing people's response, consideration and thought, I really enjoyed the response to my first show at the University of Oxford in 2019. I enjoyed creating art with artist Sadie Clayton at the Tate Exchange in the Tate Modern. A highlight coming up is my work displayed at the Design Museum in London in 2021.